Well, what we're looking at here is nothing less than the death of freely available copyable data. Now the University of Southampton has uh, completed its research into these laser written pieces of glass, well, quartz, and by embedding nanostructures in these uh, glass disks, very small glass disks, they have been able to achieve an unprecedented data storage density. Now, if you look carefully at the picture, you will see there is a little square in the dead center. That is actually the file or the data area. The rest of it is just pretty graphics. Now, how much data can this thing store? Well, in its prototype version, and remember data storage density usually increases with new technologies quite rapidly. This tiny little disk can store 300 terabytes. And it's extremely difficult to write. You need very advanced laser equipment and you need a very advanced micro positioning stage because the data is actually written by burning 3D microstructures into the crystal in three layers. Now what they use to encode it, it's called five dimensional encoding because you've not only got the three-dimensional position of the structure, you've also got its size and its orientation. And this amount of data in such a tiny space raises some quite disturbing implications. Now, here we have the Holy Bible, as it says, encoded not as a text file, but as images of every single page in that tiny little square in the center. And this is the prototype version. Now, if, if those of you who might remember an awful long time ago, we had these things called CDs. And CDs could only store um, something like, I think it was 320 megabytes of information. And then some bright spark came up with the DVD, which used essentially the same technology. And that could store 4.6 gigabytes. So here we have the very, very start, the very, very first prototype and it can store 300 terabytes. And not only that, it can store it even at elevated temperatures for the lifetime of the universe. At room temperature, then the life of this data is essentially unlimited. Reports that oh, it will store it for the lifetime of the universe are actually wrong if you read the paper. Um, published by the University of Southampton, you will see that the three that the thirteen point eight billion year data storage time quoted is at one hundred and sixty degrees centigrade. That's way above the boiling point of water. Now what are the disturbing implications for this? Well the disturbing implications there are several. The first is it's very, very easy to read. All you actually need is a microscope lens and a polarizer, and you can read the data. So reading devices 
can be made very small. Okay, small ones haven't been developed yet, but it's only a matter of time. You think about the way that a CD or DVD is read, you have a scanning lens, you have a laser which has variable focus, and it's practically the same technology, except it's not rotating, but who knows, perhaps they will make a rotating version, which would then be even easier to build a device to read it. And people may think that this is years and years off, but this technology was first demonstrated in a crude form in 2013, just a few years ago. So, <laughs> look at how far it's come. And the disturbing implications are that this will become a bedrock of our society like the internet. You could put every film, well, every major film that's been, ever been released on one of these discs, every single one. You could put every music track that's ever been released on one of these discs. And they're not copyable. Sure, you can get the data off it, but what are you going to do with 300 terabytes of data? You can't write it to another one because of the horrendous amount of equipment required to create one of these disks. So I can see what's going to happen. What's going to happen is people will be forced to buy a subscription. And every year or every two years or whatever it is, you'll get a new one of these disks which will have 10,000 years worth of entertainment on it. and freely copyable data such as films and so on that will just die and the internet itself will be scaled back because if you think about it you could put pretty much the entirety of the internet apart from dynamic sites such as Facebook and so on onto the, one of these disks so the amount of traffic going across the internet would be dramatically reduced. And in fact, you can think of a kind of internet companion disk being produced that would store an awful lot of the existing video and pictorial data, which is what takes up most of the space on the internet, and the internet just consisting of text files and an occasional video or picture that just happens to be new. And this technology could indeed pave the way for the closure of the internet as we know it today. You would have an internet inside your phone, inside your PDA, inside your laptop. And this technology is quite insidious from that point of view. Now, the other disturbing thing about it is that already the people who have produced this are saying that it will allow encoding of all our information so that future generations will be able to have it and it won't be lost. And this is in the event of some great cosmic catastrophe. It would be interesting to know exactly who has sponsored this research and whether they think such a cosmic ca catastrophe is just around the corner. And this is going to revolutionise the world of data communications and the world of computing even, in ways that we can't really comprehend yet. But certainly within the next five to six years, I foresee a huge change 
in the way that data is distributed, in the way that movies and um, music are distributed, in the way that the internet is used, all based on this technology. Because don't forget, although it's incredibly expensive to have a writer for this, it would be possible to write thousands of them at a time just using a single nano table and multiple laser heads and you would never ever with the current state of technology for the foreseeable 20 years be able to have a home based writer for one of these things a reader on the other hand is dead easy a reader we could build now using the technologies we have so this device is going to worm its way into society in much the way same way as the mobile phone has everyone will have a device in their pocket in their homes which contains a little disc like this which has absolutely enormous amounts of data on it okay you can't write to it but you can read from it and with that much data available it would be amazing how much you could do and it would also be amazing and this is the final point in my slight unease it would also be amazing how much data the government could capture on you imagine one of these disks could store files on millions of people with all your personal information and if you had one of these disks per person then you could store absolutely everything about that person their entire credit card history since the year dot every single text message every single email that that person has written could also be stored this is a very very empowering tool for a big brother state so i hope this has given you something to think on and if you want to uh, have a look further it's the university of southampton just do a search for 5d university of southampton and you'll find a whole bunch of pages about this technology. Uh, the paper itself is not released online yet. I have seen excerpts shown to me by friends because I used to work down there and I know a few people at the university. So, yeah, it's quite disquieting really. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again hopefully soon. Bye.